I'm all about spreadsheets. I do everything with spreadsheets. I don't even take notes and documents anymore. I take all my notes and spreadsheets. Uh, I, uh, it, spreadsheets are incredibly useful. They keep everything organized. It's easier to add things in and delete them. Uh, it's easier to add in sequences, and you can analyze data really, really quickly with them. Uh, so today, I hope that you will be as excited about spreadsheets as I am. I'm going to teach you the basics, and it's good to get the ex kind of hands-on experience with it. Um, but ultimately, do not be afraid just to look things up or to ask questions. Um, we're not doing Excel just because not everyone probably has Excel downloaded. But if if you sometimes you are if you're working on a desktop, you can also use Excel. Although Google Sheets is generally pretty much the same. There are some things that are a little bit different, but. For almost everything I'm teaching you today, it's the same. And if you are in a lab where they're asking you to use spreadsheets, uh, like I always just default to Google Sheets. Um, but if they want you to do Excel and something isn't quite working like you expect it to, you always just look it up. And I always just look things up. And then you just get, you get better at like searching how to look up how to do things on, on uh, a spreadsheet uh, the more you do it. All right, so let's uh, jump into this. Let's open a new blank spreadsheet within our Google Drive by clicking New and then Google Sheets. Once it's open, we can give it a name by double clicking where it says Untitled Spreadsheet. Within the document we've created, we have a single sheet but can add more by clicking the plus sign at the bottom of our screen. We can rename and reorder the sheets however we like. Each sheet is arranged as a grid. Columns are designated by letters across the top, and rows are numbered down the side. The grid references will help us later. We can highlight an entire row or column by clicking on its reference, or we can highlight a single cell by clicking once inside it. If we double click inside a cell, we get a cursor and can start typing. What we type will appear in the cell as well as in the formula bar across the top. This is important because when we start to use formulas, this bar will always tell us the truth about where the information in our cells came from. So um, spreadsheets are uh, super, super powerful. And I hope to, uh, today, by the end of today, I hope that you're going to feel empowered to make your own really cool spreadsheets. And spreadsheets do not have to be ugly either. After we start adding data, we may want to change the way it looks to make it more readable, more functional, or just nicer to look at. First, let's add a new column by right-clicking on the label of the column next to where we want to add it, and scrolling down to Insert 1 left. If we just want to add a few cells, we can do that by highlighting the cells directly below where we want to add our new cells, right-clicking, and selecting Shift Down. We can adjust the width and height of our cells by dragging between the column or row references, or we can right click and choose resize, which gives us the option to type in a number. If we have text that doesn't fit inside our cell, it will overflow into the next one. If we don't want that to happen, we can change it in our toolbar by finding where it says text wrapping and either selecting wrap down to make it expand the cell size or clip so only what fits in the cell is showing. This won't delete any extra characters, just hide them. Our editing toolbar is how we can make our text bold, change the font size and color, or change the fill color of the cell. And let me give you advice that will help you your whole life. Don't choose the top option in the colors. Choose the option right underneath it, the pretty pastel version of them. You're going to make much prettier spreadsheets and everyone's going to want to read your spreadsheets more. If you only learn one thing today, take that away, okay? To use more pastel colors. Also, generally avoid red because people associate red with wrong. If we want our text to have more space, we can highlight the cells around it and merge them together by clicking Merge Cells in our editing toolbar. We can put a border around a highlighted cell or group of cells by clicking Add Border and choosing the type we want. We have the option to change the color and line type of our border. Now we can change the horizontal alignment of our text just as we would in a Word document, and we can change the vertical alignment as well. We also have the option to change the direction of the text within the cell.
Since spreadsheets are frequently used for numerical data, our editing toolbar also has features for adjusting and formatting numbers. We can increase or decrease the number of visible decimal places. This doesn't change the data, just how we view it. We can also assign it to be formatted as a monetary value or a percentage. For more options or to revert to a plain number, we can click on the Numbers menu. Another useful formatting feature is conditional formatting, which is under the Format tab. This allows us to assign different fill colors or fonts to cells based on their contents. We can choose the range of cells we want our rules to apply to by clicking and dragging to highlight the ones we want. You can see the program will use their grid references to display the range in our rule. There are a number of options to choose from for our rule to follow, which can be used for text, numbers, or both. Once we choose our rule and assign our criteria, we have the option to change the formatting however we like. Now when we add new data to cells in that range, they will automatically format themselves based on whether or not they adhere to the rules we set. If we want to set another rule, we can do that by clicking Add Rule. Instead of highlighting our range, we can also type it in using the grid reference of the first cell in the range, a colon, and then the grid reference of the last cell in the range. The range for this rule can be different than our last rule. An individual cell can have many rules attached to it that may or may not be shared by its neighbors. As soon as we choose our conditions for this rule and click Done, it will automatically to apply to all the cells in the range. The last feature we're going to talk about is the freeze feature, which can be found under the view tab. This gives us the option to freeze a number of rows at the top of our page or columns at the left of our page. This can be particularly useful when we have headings that we want to be visible even as we scroll through the sheet. Sheets has a number of other features that can make your life easier. First is the drag feature. If you have data in a cell that you want to repeat in other cells, highlight it and hover over the bottom corner until your cursor turns into a cross. Then click and drag it across the range where you want it to repeat. If you don't want the same value in every cell, but your data set follows a linear pattern, you can type in the first few values, highlight them, and drag down. Your pattern will be carried to the rest of the cells. This can be especially helpful with dates. When you type two numbers with a slash in between into a cell, it's assumed to be a date. Our formula bar shows us that it's automatically assigned to the current year. Once you have a date in a cell, if you drag it down, it will create a list. If you want the expanded form of the dates to show in your cells, remember we can change it under the Numbers menu. Another useful feature of Sheets is its ability to sort data alphabetically. If we have a column that has text in it that we want to sort by, we first have to make sure that our cursor is somewhere in that column. Then we can go up to Data and choose to sort the sheet by that column, either A to Z or Z to A. When we do this, the rows will remain intact. If we don't want to sort the whole sheet, we can choose to just sort a range by highlighting it. Again, making sure our cursor is within the column we want to sort by. Now when we go up to Data, we will have the option to sort just this range. When we do this, the rows inside the range stay intact, but any cells outside the range won't move with the rest of their row. Another advanced feature that can be particularly useful is the Data Validation Tool. This lets us have more control over what's inside our cells. We can set up an error message that will stop us from inputting data in the wrong form. Now we can only fill that cell with the approved form of information. We can also use this feature to create drop-down menus within our cells. There's two ways to do this. In the first, we go to Data Validation, choose the range where we want our list. Then choose our criteria to be List of Items. We type in what we want our options to be, separated by commas.
The second way to do it lets us create a list that has options taken from somewhere else in our document. We still start by choosing the range where we want the menu to be. You'll see that in addition to grid references in our range, we have a designation of what sheet we're in. That takes the form of the name of the sheet followed by an exclamation point. This time we'll choose our criteria to be a list from a range and we'll open up the range selection. If we click onto another sheet, our selection dialog box will stay open and we can highlight our range of desired answer choices and hit OK. If we only have a sheet reference in one of our data ranges within the data validation dialog box, it will be assumed that both our ranges are coming from the same sheet, which can cause problems. We need to add a sheet reference to the cell range. We can do that by typing in the name of our sheet. Our input has to exactly match the name, so when creating and renaming sheets, it's helpful to avoid using spaces to make referencing easier. Now that we have our references right, our drop-down menu will work. All right, so let's try to do some more complicated stuff. Let's talk about how to use formulas and functions. To set up a function, we have to start it with an equal sign, then we can type whatever formula we want to follow. Let's start with a simple addition equation. Once we hit enter, the cell will show us the answer, but when we highlight it, our formula bar will show us where that number came from. If we type the equation into a cell without an equal sign, it won't perform the calculation. With the equal sign, we can perform incredibly complex calculations using parentheses and the basic operators for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Instead of typing in numbers, we can also perform calculations using grid references to other cells that contain numbers. When we drag down a cell with references in it, it will change to reference the cell with the same relationship to the new cell. As we dragged our formula down to row 2, our reference also changes to row 2. If we drag to the right, the formulas will reference the second column, and the row reference will still change as we drag down. If we don't want this to happen, we can use the dollar sign operator. By putting it in front of the row number in the grid reference, when we drag down, we will continue to reference the same row. To maintain our column reference as we drag to the right, we also need a dollar sign before the column designation in the grid reference. There are other built-in functions that can perform more complex calculations, like the sum function. Again, we have to start with an equal sign to indicate we are about to input a formula. Then we can type in sum with open parentheses. We highlight or type in the range of references we want to sum, then close the parentheses and press enter. The cell shows the sum, but when we highlight it, we can see the formula bar still shows what we typed in. Another common function is the random function. I'm just going to say, you might not realize why we use this function, but it's really a helpful function. Um, and actually, if you ever work inside like a genetics laboratory where you're trying to run models of like trying to make predictions, random's really, really helpful. You used random before if you uh, did the AP Bio lab, because that's like a part of it. When you're trying to figure out like what the genotype will be of something, um, it's like a coin flip. To use it, we type in equal sign R-A-N-D followed by parentheses. When we hit enter, it will generate a random number between 0 and 1. We can drag this down and create more random numbers, but what is actually being dragged down is the formula we typed in. The formula bar shows us this. Each time we change the formatting, type in a new cell, or refresh the page, the RAND function will generate a new number for each cell that it appears in. If we just want a single set of random numbers that we can work with without them changing, we have to copy and paste. Just like with dragging, copying and pasting from cells will bring over the formula and not the content as it's seen in the cell. If we want the values and not the formulas, we can copy the cells like normal, then right-click where we want to paste, 
go down to Paste Special and choose Paste Values Only. Now we have a set of randomly generated numbers that won't change as we try to reference them in a new equation. If we drag a formula so that it references an empty cell, it will treat that cell as if it has a zero in it. Using dollar sign operators in the grid references of our formulas can keep this from happening. Sheets has a large number of embedded functions that we can use in a variety of ways depending on what our project calls for. If we know the formulas for them, we can type them in the cells and type in our reference ranges as well. But we can also find them in our toolbar under Functions. Choosing a function from this menu will insert it into whatever cell is highlighted, and then we can input whatever parameters the function calls for. Sheets will show you a pop-up of what parameters you need and what format they should take. Under the functions list, we can see they are arranged by use, so when you start a new project, you can look up which ones may be helpful to you. Check this out. Look how cool this is. Look at this. 